better plug this thing in, right? Praise the Lord, guys. Man, I love you. I love my friends and family. Uh, you know what? We just might be in heaven before sunrise in Central Standard Time. There's going to be a lot of graves breaking open in the daylight hours around the world. There's going to be a witness that there was a rapture, that there was a resurrection. The dead in Christ will rise first, and we which are alive and remain living shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. This is when the alien lie kicks in in all those movies. The you know invasion of the body snatchers. This is it. This is the lie. This is which separates. This is the fork in the road. Okay. Then you got the rapture of the real bride. The real bride going to be caught up. And all those who preach the rapture that won't be caught up because they weren't saved by grace through faith. They thought they were saved because they were such great macho people of the faith. Look at me, Jesus. Check me out. Look how I can persevere to the end. John MacArthur and those boys. Sickening, man. Guys, we are all pitiful souls in need of a Savior. And you must recognize that fact. You must humble yourself before an almighty God and say, Oh, Lord, I have messed up everything that I touch. I ruin everything that I get involved with. I surely can't do anything about my salvation. I haven't been able to to this point. And I humble myself before you, Lord, and I just believe. I know it's all about you. I believe. Your death, your burial, your resurrection, I believe. I believe in you, only you. It's all about you, Jesus. And that is the truth. When a man gets saved only by Jesus, and he understands that only Jesus will keep him saved, then is that man truly saved. Okay? There's going to be a whole bunch of people left behind. And if tonight is that night, guys, ain't nobody, ain't nobody expecting New York City to go missing before sunrise. The people I tell... tell I tell them the fact that New York City is going to go missing. We think it'll be at nighttime. And there won't be a soul left alive in the city. And I tell them the facts and they still don't believe what I'm talking about. I didn't give them a date. I didn't give them any time frame. I just told them the facts that New York City is going to go missing. And it will be the world leaders who planned it against us, you know. And it was God planning it the whole time. See, remember reading Psalm 2, and he's listening to all their conspiracy theories, and God laughs at their plans because he's the one that put it in their heart. And they think it was themselves who did it. Oh, I come up with such a great plan. God's like, <laughs> he's laughing. I'm going to have you do that. I'm going to have you wipe out New York. God hates New York so bad. And dude, I have been shown the... Uh, trailer to Babylon, the movie, uh, with what's-his-face in it, okay, Brad Pitt, and a whole bunch of stars, glorifying Babylon. Iron Maiden, the guy that it's in my office, I, he must have had it on the Iron Maiden channel. He's always changing the channel, what, whatever, but in just a very short time when I was on my break, I hear three Iron Maiden songs. Actually, it was on one break, I heard two, and then I came back four hours later or something, and he plays the third one, or the third one plays. All three of them talk about the demise of New York City. Run to the hills. That was when the white man came over here and chased off the Indians and killed the Indians. Now, God's going to have vengeance on them. Remember that? Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. It's time for vengeance to be paid. Then they got... Uh, 666, Number of the Beast, the sacrifice tonight. These 50 million souls that will be dying from this event are a sacrifice that's chalked up to Obama. He gets the blood ritual power from this thing and his 10 kings who helped him. This is a ritual, a blood ritual of power. And that's what they're doing tonight. And he gets the power from it. And then finally... The Writing on the Wall was the third song. All, all three Iron Maiden tunes. And the Writing on the Wall, guys, you've got to bring up the lyrics to that. You must see the lyrics to that. The whole thing is about 
America going down, and specifically New York City. And he calls New York City Babylon. From L.A. to Babylon. I mean, that's a marker. We always use that marker from L.A. to New York. From New York to L.A., right? Everybody loves it. Oh, American. Oh, pride in every American heart. That's why God's going to blow us up because there's pride in every American heart. God hates pride and he's sick of pride and he's about to bring you low, homie. He's about to bring America low. We're going to, America will be lower than any other country on this planet. We will be humbled because we were so great. You know, the taller they are, the greater they fall. The larger they are, the greater they fall. And so great was the demise of the United States of America. And that very well may be tonight, guys. Because when we look at Sean's codes here, they coincide Pentecost and Tabernacles. And the rapture happens at Pentecost and Tabernacles, and we've been preaching that. Leviticus 23 is such an important chapter that is most missed. And this is by design, Satan. As God gave Israel blindness, Satan has given Christians blindness. And it's by shinies. He shines bright lights. You know, all of Satan's lights are fake. Broadway, Vegas, you can go there and check it out. And the light of Jesus Christ is, he doesn't need electricity. His is better than Tesla. Tesla was kind of tuned in, understanding how, how the ether worked. But it still was something that God created. The light that we follow and the light that's within us if we're believers in the Lord Jesus Christ is greater than atomic. Greater, you know, remember we did those several codes on the uh, sh Shroud of Turin? And that light that exploded from Jesus during the resurrection is what imprinted that cloth in 3D. That's a powerful light, and that's the light that we serve, Jesus Christ, the light of the world. And then he's touched us, and he said, now you're that light. And he's placed that light, the Holy Spirit of God, within us. And now we are the lights of the world. And that is what we should be doing 24-7. That should be our hunger and our thirst and our activities and our thoughts and our game plans and everything that we do. We, we plan everything around Jesus and pleasing him and, and making sure that, you know, if we really are about to be raptured, making sure souls aren't going to be destroyed. If you'll stop and think, guys, I made a little post this morning about the miseries. The miseries are going to be terrible. People will not be able to get their CPAP machines because of electricity. People will not be able to get their medicine. You talk about the pain and the misery in that. They've already got themselves hooked, and now they can't get to it. And this is where Obama steps in. Hey, you want your pills? Get this mark. If you get this mark, you can have your pills. You can have your food. We'll give you housing. We'll give housing to everybody. We will give you credit points on your credit card. It'll be your hand, you know, a chip in your hand. You'll become rich. You won't have to worry and you won't have to starve and you won't have to be miserable day and night with all these aches and pains and starvation. Just, just get this chip here. We'll fix you right up. That's why people are going to be jumping on this thing. That's why for three and a half years, Sean will have come back along with the other fella, preaching the truth. Do not get this. And they'll be going, laying it out line by line, and they'll be using the Bible code to do it, guys. The Bible code is going to be the main book of the tribulation. Because it's why. It's all 66 books. The Bible code is found within all 66 books. And the Jews are going to find out that, wow, Jesus was mentioned over and over and over in the Old Testament, Yeshua, and that he's the Savior, and you guys killed your Savior. And then they're going to find out in the New Testament, the same stuff's coded there. And wow, what does that do? It connects the Old and New Testament. The whole Bible was God's Word, not just the Tanakh, the Old Testament. Wow! And they're going to have realization upon realization, and they'll be saved. But tonight, guys, it looks like tonight might be, might be, the kill shot. Okay? Let's look at these codes here that Sean has put up today. The one from eight hours ago. The one from eight hours ago. I love you guys. Oh, man, you know what? I had a couple couple guys call me, and I couldn't get back with you. I was at work. I work. I work full-time. I'm off the clock, you know, off of being able to communicate for about 10 hours a day. 
And so somebody called me thanking God for the Bible study and everything. And I just wanted to say, hey, thanks for that call, man. And so he said, I want to know if you're real. So uh, Tom Barnes called and Thomas Cooper called. And so I love you guys, man. I love you, Tom Barnes. And I love you, Thomas Cooper from Texas. Praise the Lord. We're the real deal. And we might be getting raptured this very, very evening, guys. And so what does this code say? This code from Sean eight hours ago says, get saved now. Get saved now, man. Escape God's wrath while you still can. But guys, as long as you're saved, you escape God's wrath. Get saved. Get saved. Understand. Quit your pride. Get out of your pride. Get out of your selfishness. Get out of your false doctrine. Get out of your Calvinism and your Arminianism. Calvinism says, it's up to me to persevere to the end, and that's the proof that I'm saved. Arminianism says, if I don't walk holy and stuff, I'll lose my salvation. Do you know how many people walk in both of those I was going to say standings, but they're not standings. They're graves. They walk in those graves. Those are graves. Those will get you killed and left behind. And we call on you to trust the Lord Jesus Christ only, man, and him alone. Escape God's wrath while you still can because time is running out. Um, maybe tonight, guys. Maybe before sunrise. Because why do we say that? Because today is the eighth day of tabernacles. Okay? Tabernacles is all part of Shavuot, the counting of the weeks, Pentecost. We learned that along the way. It's a good thing that we didn't bail and quit and go, oh, wow, man. Sorry, God. See you, see you next Pentecost. He, we kept searching. The Lord kept showing. He wants us to know. And only the faithful know, guys. Only a few of us know. Okay. There is no place that anybody's going to be able to hide from his wrath. It's going to be gruesome. I am telling you, the miseries are going to be so intense. All the poisonous water is going to be so poisonous, guys. You can't drink salt, salt water. You can't drink seawater. You will die. And all that water is going to be pushed across New York City. It'll totally wipe New York City out with this Russian bomb that they're going to explode. The Bible, God lets us in on it. He tells us their secrets. You guys remember Elisha? And the enemy king is like, okay, so who's the spy here? Why does that Elisha guy know every one of our plans that we plan in the dark? Which one of you is a spy? And they spoke up and said, none of us are spies, king. His God tells him everything we're planning. Now, guys, God works in the same pattern always. He's no respecter of person, okay? So if he told Elisha the prophet the plans of the enemy— well, then that means he's going to tell Sean the prophet the plans of the enemy. And now we all know the plans, those of us that have believed. And God told us that they are going, and this is God doing it, that they are going to take out the entire city of New York with a tsunami bomb from the Russians called the Poseidon. We have Bible codes telling us about the Poseidon. God's good. And what is a Poseidon? He's the beast from the sea. Right, and he, and he has the trident, the fork. We, we encourage you to watch that Maserati commercial where she talks about the Nephilim coming. They were we, they were all giants, and da da da. We came down here, we settled on Earth, and we waited for them to get so fat and lazy they could hardly move. That's that's the Americans, and then we strike. Okay, and so it, it's the beast from the sea, and that's Barack Obama. We, we are told that the Antichrist he is called the beast from the sea, and why is that so important? Uh, the sea is the people of the Gentiles, okay? The land, when God talks about in Revelation, the land, the people of the land or the land, that's Israel, and the people of the sea are the Gentiles. So that's what God's always referring to. And so he's the beast out of the sea. And it's also the time of Aquarius. It's a water event. It's water time. That's why the ice bucket challenge was there. It was all ritual unto this time, a water event, a cold, ice cold water event. Guys, and that's what people have been doing. They've been feeding the devil. They've been feeding the beast, the beast from the sea. Guys, it's time to get saved. Time to tell your friends. It's time not to be afraid to post these codes. Will you quit being fearful? You're going to look into the eyes of Jesus and say, oh, I was so scared to show your Bible. 
I was so afraid to speak up, man, because it didn't happen 50 days after we started counting. And I was so embarrassed about that and uh, snap out of it, panty waist. You wuss. God has given us a whole bunch more Bible codes proven what he already said. It is a Pentecost spring summer rapture and it coincides with tabernacles and we're in day eight of tabernacles and it's cold out there, baby. And it's ripe. And God is so mad. We know that he's mad. We know the time is now, guys. That blood moon on May 15th, the first day on his calendar, he was livid then. And oh, 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 wait, wait, wait. My, my bad. I, I, I didn't mean to be livid. Or do you think coals have been added? Do you think fuel has been added to that fire? I know it has. We've had that Israeli election. We've had these false elections here. We've had people leaving the country and making treaties and conversations and talks. People hooking up with laboratories. A whole bunch of stuff has happened since May 15. And God has only become more angry and now is the time for rapture. Now is both Pentecost and Tabernacles. And it says that huge cross right here in the middle of this table is a picture that represents your only way of escape, Jesus Christ and the cross of Calvary. Believe, please believe, man, we're telling you, all you got to do is believe. Believe that you are a sinner, deserve hell, you deserve to be in New York dying tonight. You deserve that. But Jesus Christ doesn't want you. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Will you believe? Repentance means believe what the Bible says. Believe the word of Jesus. Believe the Bible code. Believe these warnings. Will you believe? I encourage you to look to the Lord and say, I believe, I, Lord, I believe all this. I believe I'm a sinner and, and I should go to hell and I, I deserve it all, but you love me and you took it for me. You are already punished for my sin, past, present, and future, and I love it. And I believe it. Be saved. And you'll look at that cross right there. Bam, that, that's the picture of the only escape, Jesus Christ. And don't be an arrogant fool. Don't be proud. Don't be stupid, man. I've got them in my family. I've got proud, arrogant fools in my family that breaks my heart. They think they're just tough guys and they think they know better. They don't. Hey, he's got some passages here. Let's look at 2 Peter. Let's open our Bibles to 2 Peter chapter 3. I love the Bible, man. Don't you love the Bible? Praise God. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 1. He says, This second epistle I am writing unto you in both which to stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance. That's why we go over the Bible every night. So to remind us, we go to work 10 hours a day. We're away from our families. We're in the middle of a cesspool, a bunch of lying, thieving, drunkards, uh, fornicators, just wicked, wicked people. We're in the midst of that. And so we come back and we encourage you. We throw more logs in the holy fire and say, come on, guys, stay fired up in the Lord Jesus. Here's some promises. He's going to take care of us. He says, I'm writing unto you to stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets. That's why we read the Old Testament prophets. Because here we are, Peter, talking about God, about to go meltdown. He's finally going to flip the switch and things are on like Donkey Kong. Okay. It's on like Donkey Kong, baby. And it's time. Now's the time. And Peter says, I need you to remember what the Old Testament prophets said about all this. That's why we go there. And the modern day church won't. They don't like Peter saying stuff like that. They don't like their house being melted down. They don't like not getting their paycheck next week. They don't like the idea that New York City is going to be underwater after it was totally devastated and every building was crushed and bruised and destroyed. And in comes with that bomb, they're sending in tons of radiation. Radiation is let loose from this explosion and it contaminates the water. That water comes all the way in and then there's runoff. And so many people downstream are going to be in trouble as well. Okay? Keep reading. We're in 2 Peter chapter 3. Verse, middle of verse two. And so we're here to remind you what the Holy Prophet said. Okay, that's what's missing in church. Second Peter three, verse two. People just won't read that and go to the old prophets. I'm encouraging you to do that. And that's why we do that. And of the commandments of the, the apostles of the Lord and Savior, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days people who scoff and make fun and laugh. Now, 
I've had people who, who preach that, and they're the same people who come to me and scoff and laugh at the Bible code. You're in trouble. You're in trouble. If you have scoffed the Bible code, you know what the Bible says about somebody who scoffs the Bible code? You are an abomination. The Bible code says that. That's God talking. That's God. He says, the Bible code is me speaking in my dialect. And now I've let you in on it. It took a computer for you guys to be able to understand how I speak. Aren't you thankful that he brought the Bible to us in the language that we speak? And then years later, he said, now you guys want to hear how I say it? On equidistant letter skips, letter sequences that are perfected and blow your mind all the way through my text. You want to see that? All the way through all 66 books. You want to see that? And he has spoken to us in these last days and men scoff it. Oh, godly Christian. And it's always the pastors who know better. And most of those guys, uh, uh, all of them, all of them who have really scoffed me and made fun and ridiculed went to seminary. Satan's target. Game plan fulfilled. Hail Satan. Scoff the codes. What does Peter say? He says, knowing this first, that there shall come. You got to know this. Before I start, before I continue my message here, you got to know this first. In the last days, they're coming scoffers. And don't you be scared of scoffers. You present the truth. You present the warnings, man. The, the solution to the warning is that big cross right here on this table. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ and him crucified. His death, burial, and resurrection. And they scoff because they're walking after their own lust. They don't want New York to be blown away off the map. They don't want the tribulation to start just yet. They were hoping for like another 30 years. You fool, fool, fool. You know what a fool does? Says, no, God. God says, hey, uh, my anger started May 15th. I'm coming with some bombs. We're going to start with New York City. I'm going to decap decapitate the dragon at the head. And then I'm coming for the heart seven years later. No, God. No, the fool hath said in his heart. When you look in the King James... The words, there is, do not exist. It says, the fool hath said in his heart, no, God. That's a bunch of Christians. That's the Christian scoffers who say, no, God, you're a fool. And we're encouraging you not to be that fool. Believe the Lord Jesus Christ and don't say no to God. Verse 4, and saying, where is the promise of his coming, man? I heard my grandpa say that. My great-grandpa used to talk about the coming of the Lord. He hadn't come yet. So where is this promise? For since the fathers all have died and fell asleep, things just continue on like they were from the beginning of creation. Did you forget about that flood? Things didn't continue on the way they were from creation. That's what this guy just said. There was a massive flood that changed everything. Your doctrine's wrong. You better stick with the Bible and God's story on this. A lot has changed since creation. It ain't the same, baby. And then Jesus shows up on the scene. That changed everything. That cross, that empty tomb, changed everything. Paradigm shift. You talk about a pole shift. Jesus was the one that welcomed women. Everybody hated women. Women had to walk way back there. And Jesus said, no, man, I love the gals too. I created them. I created man in my image and I created gals in man's image. And I love the gals. Woo! Those Pharisees didn't like that. Jesus loves us all, man, because in heaven, he, he sees way ahead. In heaven, there's neither male nor female, bond or free, black or white. He knows what's ahead, and he loves us all at the cross. Get to the cross, man. Be saved. Quit being a fool and saying, no, God, no, God. I know better than you. You don't. Let's just say it. You're, you're an idiot. You're a fool. The Bible says the foolishness of God is wiser than the wisest guy that lives. Okay? And everything you got is foolishness compared to what God's got. If your belief system opposes Scripture in any way, you're a fool. Because you're saying, no, God. Continuing on. Verse 3, knowing this first, that there shall come in the last day scoffers walking after their own lust, saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue on as they were from the beginning of creation. Verse 5. For this they are willingly ignorant of. That by the word of God, the heavens were of old and earth standing out of the water and in the water, whereby the world that was then was overflowed with water. They all perished. They forgot about the flood. 
There has been paradigm changes. The flood was one. Okay? The law was one. When Moses gave the law, I mean, things changed right there. Now we have the name of God. God, what's your name? Jehovah, yod heh vav -Hey, I am. We learned that. Whoa! Paradigm shift. Then all of a sudden, Jesus comes. Whoa! Paradigm. Jesus just might come and rapture us tonight. You talk about a paradigm shift. Things ain't the same as they were from creation. These people speak ignorantly as fools would. Where is his coming? When is he coming? It's probably tonight, guys. New York City, it's right here. New York City will be underwater, dead and gone. No survivors, 1.5 million Jews dead. Do you know what kind of agony that'll stir in the hearts of their brothers and their family members in Israel and still here in the United States and around the world? My cousin was just killed there in New York City. Do you guys know that in the last two years, a humongous number of Jews have left New York City? And headed to Florida. They should have gone to Israel, but they didn't. They headed to Florida. And you guys know that Florida is surrounded by water, right? You just wait till that pole shift gets them. They're all going to die. God wants you Jews, if you're not going to be saved and believe in that cross and believe in Yeshua, your Messiah, whom you killed. If you're not going to believe in him, get to Israel. Okay? And you listen to the two guys dressed in sackcloth and the 144,000 witnesses. They're only going to be preaching the truth for your safety's sake. And they'll be encouraging and blowing up and lifting up and edifying one Yeshua of Nazareth, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And you better believe him. I encourage you to believe him tonight and be saved. Escape this mess. Verse 5. They're so willingly ignorant. And they forgot all about it. Verse 6, whereby the world that was then being overflowed with water perished. But the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word, are kept in store, reserved unto fire this time. It's going to be a water event that takes out New York. But it will all happen because of intelligent fire. Push the button. The drone does its thing, it gets into position, it ignites, there's fire that ignites and releases this fission fusion deal and creates this hell of water. But it came by way of fire. Then there's going to be literal fireballs and f lightning and plasma blast that's going to be burning this world down, man. And the first time was a flood instantaneous. It rained for 40 days and 40 nights and those folks were dead. There, there was nobody left. They were probably all dead day 20, day 10. They climbed as high as they could and the water went 15, was it cubits guys? 15 cubits above the highest mountain because you weren't going to be able to swim and tread that long. God killed them all with water, and this time he's killing everybody with fire. And this New York City event is going to start with a detonation of fire, which is going to create this massive tsunami that kills everybody there. And many in its wake, its poisonous, treacherous wake. Continuing on. Verse 7. But the heavens and the earth, which are now, by the same word, are kept in store, reserved, unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. That's right now. That's right now. They love and celebrate Babylon. I'm encouraging you guys to get the lyrics to that Iron Maiden tune writing on the wall. He's talking about America being destroyed. And that was two years ago, year and a half. Okay? And you need to watch the video. The video tells you that America and the, the leadership countries, England, are all now in rags and tattered and they're starving to death. And there's a new boy on the scene, the Asian. Okay? And they even have a goat being pinned to a pentagram. And it names uh, four demises, but it leaves out the Antichrist. And you'll see it there, death and famine and... Okay, They know what's going on in the satanic world. It's the Christians who are stupid. It's the Christians who don't know God's plan. And God is livid. And his judgment begins in the house of God. And that's where it's going to start. Man, he's, he's angry, guys. He's angry with the wicked every day. Verse 8. Oh, but beloved Christians, this is for the wicked. We've been talking about the wicked, but now we're talking to you. 
don't be ignorant of this one thing. If you're going to be ignorant about anything in the Bible, don't be ignorant. And then he lays out the seven-day plan of God. Six days of blood, sweat, toil, tears, man's rule. We blow everything up. We mess everything up. It's disgusting and sinful. Then on that seventh day, the seventh thousandth year, that's what we're seven years away from Jesus coming back and ruling, setting up rulership. On that seventh day, it's a whole thousand year period we refer to as the millennium. We're about to end the six thousand years or the six days. One day with the Lord is as a thousand years and a thousand years is as a day. That's what he's referring to here in this passage. He says, and if you Christians are going to be ignorant about anything in the Bible, and that's most Christians, you're all a bunch of ignorant retards, okay? Because you don't read your Bible. But if you're going to be ignorant, don't be ignorant about this one thing. What one thing? A day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years is as a day. That's what we're talking about. The six days of creation, so he's got a 6,000-year plan. And then on the seventh day, he rested. And on the seventh day, man will be able to rest when Jesus is their king. Okay, the 7,000-year plan of God. That's what Peter's talking about. Don't be ignorant of this. Okay, and so that, therefore, you must know that we're at the end. We are at year 5,993. There's only seven left to 6,000 when Jesus begins his rulership on 6,000 and day one. And that's the seventh day. That begins the seventh day for a thousand years. Do not be ignorant of this one thing. Quit living for the temporary. It's over, folks. And you're going to hate having to look in Jesus' face knowing you lived like a fool and were ignorant of this one thing that Peter told you not to be ignorant of. Your pastor... Man, you, you need to probably go, and if the Lord doesn't wipe us out tonight and rapture us tonight, you need to probably go throat punch your pastor for being such a dummy and using his vocal cords and tongue for nonsense, foolishness. And why are you still there with him anyway? Why are you in that congregation of fools? Get yourself out. That, that's why God has congregations like this one. People who preach the word. Uh, one of our dear ladies said, I, I can't find one soul in my town who preaches the truth and knows what's going on like this group does. And that's why we have this group for people who have nobody in their town. Remember what God said. Man, especially as you see the day of God approaching his judgment tonight, especially as you see tonight approaching, it's vital that you hang out with one another. Do not forsake assembling together as the manner of some have done. Oh, I don't need church. I, I, church is a waste. We know better than that. Church pretty much is a waste, but Bible study from godly men is not a waste. It's encouragement and it's challenging. Amen? All right. So don't be ignorant of God's game plan. Don't be ignorant of Leviticus 23. Everybody's ignorant of that. I'm talking pastors. They don't teach us at seminary number one. And that's by design because Satan doesn't want it taught. I saw a seminary pr professor Bible. He, he, he teaches Bible at the seminary. He posted his beautiful Christmas scene inside and out of his house. And he goes, I'll live like this for the next month. In Sodom. In Egypt. In Babylon. Praising for it. Oh, look at my pretty pictures, y'all. I'm a Bible teacher at seminary. Stupid fool who's ignorant of God's timeline. Stupid fool who's ignorant of God's feast. And our goal here is not to be ignorant of God's timeline and feast, okay? Be not ignorant, brethren. God wants us to go on and grow on. Verse 9, the Lord is not slack concerning the promises that he's made, as some men would count slackness, but he's long-suffering to uh, us. That's why he hadn't done anything yet. He's been patient with us. Aren't you thankful he's been patient with you? Guys, I was a rebellious pastor for a long time. I celebrated Christmas. I listened to all the rock music I could. I watched all the movies, every movie I could. I kept a remote in my hand from the moment I got out of the shower, come home from work, until it was time for bed. I was that guy. And praise God for his mercy and his grace and his forgiveness, his long-suffering. And he worked with me and taught me. And boy, when he teaches you about the truth, you break down in front of him and you just cry, cry, cry and say, Lord, woe is me. I'm undone. I'm a man of unclean lips and I dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips. And then God will t have the angel come and take a coal from off the altar and take the tongs and touch your lips and say, behold, this has touched your lips. They're clean. 
Now go and speak out of a pure heart and watch your language, watch it, watch the way you uh, go about in your procedures and just lift me up and be holy for I'm holy. And it finally clicks in your heart when you've seen God high and lifted up. You want to be holy because he already commanded you to be holy in this passage of Peter. Okay? Praise God for his long suffering. But he's long suffering to us. We're not willing that anybody goes to hell. Guys, if the Lord blows up New York City, it's going to be the Lord doing this. Not the Russians. Not, not their Poseidon undoing it. He's using these tools from these people. You know why? Because God wants them to think they're in charge. He's laughing at the fact that they think they're in charge. Until that sixth seal when they finally confess, wow, this ain't us, this is the lamb. Please save us from the wrath of the lamb, dude. Somebody help me. And God's still in heaven laughing and we'll be laughing with him. I cannot wait to see Jesus chuckling. Jesus is going to chuckle at these fools and we're going to sit there and watch him do it. Praise God. Amen. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. We're in 2 Peter 3, verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with a fervent heat. That fervent heat takes place in the nose of that torpedo drone. And when it's released, it sets off a fire like you've never known, and it's going to drown out New York City and kill everybody there. Mm. It's going to melt them with a fervent heat. And then right after that is going to be literal heat. And that's what we talked about. These fire stones of, of hail and everything coming down out, out of Nibiru's tail. Guys, it's on fire. Nibiru is on fire. Nibiru is so hot and it's burning off its crust slowly and its crust turns to rust dust. And it falls down on top of us. And people are coughing and hacking and enjoying their red sunsets and have no idea that God is about to destroy them with a system he calls the destroyer. He's always used a destroyer at the time of Exodus. Remember that death angel? He was called the destroyer. When he doesn't see the blood, he's going to destroy, and that's what's going to happen here. At the very moment this thing is detonated, God is going to call us out of here, and that's what these Bible codes that Sean has put up today are talking about, and we're getting there. But we got to set up with the plain text to see what's inside the plain text, because God's awesome. He's always awesome. And we're looking at codes in the Old Testament tonight, and we're reminded, what did Peter say? We've got to go back to the prophets to see why all this happened, what's happening. So put it to your remembrance. And that's what he's preaching here. Verse 10. The elements will melt with fervent heat and the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that these things shall be dissolved, what manner of persons ought ye do and what kind of a holy conversation should be you be involved in? That's why we get on here and say, guys, if you're not going to heaven, you better get saved. You sinners need to believe. And you saints who say you believe, you need to walk in holiness, man. You need to get sanctified like God told you to. Why? Because we see the day approaching, dude. We don't want to walk like the world. We want to walk like the Lord and please him. And he said, as I'm holy, you, you need to be holy too. That's where we're getting to. Verse 12, looking for and hastening unto that great coming day of God. Okay, now this is talking about the second coming, but you and I, we have a seven year advantage. We, we, we know something that the Jews don't know. They only know about a second coming. Most Christians today don't even believe in the rapture, but we do. We know there's a seven year head start and he's going to come for us first, but he ain't coming to earth. He's coming to the clouds. We'll join him in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Come on into this place of mine. I'm ready to go. Who's ready to go to heaven? I'm ready to go. Verse 12, looking for and hastening unto the coming of the day of the Lord, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved with, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. There's going to be several great earthquakes. Now, when there is a resurrection from the dead, there's earthquakes. Not only is this tsunami bomb going to be going off at the time of the rapture, but when all those bodies burst out of the ground, I got a feeling there's going to be an incredible earthquake that is known and felt throughout the world. Then we have another earthquake, and then we have the greatest earthquake that ever happened. Okay, The next earthquake that's coming will be when the earth spins and tilts and wobbles like a drunkard and kills a whole bunch of folks, Isaiah 24. 
That's just in about five months from now. And then there's going to be another one. And when Jesus comes back on this final day, it's going to be the worst earthquake the earth has ever experienced. It gets worse and worse and worse and worse and worse until Jesus shows up and things get better. Remember your life, how things were getting worse, 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 and then Jesus showed up? I love Jesus. He's a solving, solving, wonderful friend. He solves all my issues, solves my problems. Solves, he's the solution to it all. Verse 13, nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth. Isaiah 66, look at the last two verses, three verses of that. Ah, last 10 verses. Some exciting stuff that happens when eternity starts. There will still be humans roaming the earth, having offspring, and God opens up hell 64 times a year and allows the humans to look into hell, and that just keeps them from wanting to sin and live evil. It's awesome. He does it every Sabbath day and every new moon when the moon's so bright. Remember what we learned here? We learned that the um, new moon is the full moon. And every new moon, God's going to open up hell and let everybody look in there, and they're going to be like, you know, and he does it on, on Sabbath on the way to church, on the way to his high temple, the Ezekiel 40 temple and following. And on their way to the temple, he opens up hell, and everybody looks down in there and says, I don't want that, I don't want that. And you talk about a holy service. People who are focused on the king, who are focused on God. The reason the church is Laodicea is because hell hadn't been preached in quite some time. And people don't have a picture of hell. We need to show them hell, folks. Because God's about to. Hell on earth. Fervent heat meltdown. Verse 14. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace and without spot and blameless. That means walk holy. Just walk according to his word. He's already made us spotless and blameless, okay? But we can jump through mud puddles and mess up our robe of righteousness through living unrighteously and unholy. And God says, no, no, no. Why don't you live holy? Why don't you just be holy for I'm holy? Why don't you not have spot and wrinkle? Why don't you live a life like that? And guys, especially right now, he's about to come get us. Don't you want to be found without spot and wrinkle? Don't you want to be found walking with him in holiness and reading his word, knowing it, and hanging out with Christians who, who love him? Wouldn't that be great? And that's enough of that passage. But that, that's what we see here in Sean's first Bible code that he did this morning about eight hours ago. He's got that passage in there. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness. He, he uh, used verses 9 and 10, and we, we read 1 through 16, whatever it was. But he's not willing that any should perish, but he wants all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night on those who aren't looking. The people at my work have no idea that their family and friends are about to be killed in New York. God's about to do away with Babylon and the people where their water will run off. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in the which the heavens shall pass away with great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Let's look at this code. This is the one from eight hours ago. The translation says they were cursed. When God curses you, dude, you're in trouble. And Sean has found many people's names, false prophets. God says they're accursed. That means they will be in hell. You don't want to let God look at you and say, you're accursed. They were cursed. New York City, the world. Here is Sean Mitchell. You will taste the fire of a blameless one. Okay, so here's Sean Mitchell. We got his Bible we're going to taste the fire of the blameless one. That's Jesus. He's without blame. He was the spotless lamb. And then when Jesus saves us, he makes us blameless. So we have the word of fire coming from Jesus to Sean so Sean could get it to us in holy writing. So we could see it and appreciate it as well. Straight from heaven in God's dialect. And then Sean goes ahead and puts English subtitles on there for us. Amen? They were cursed. Here is Sean Mitchell. You will taste the fire of the blameless one, Jehovah Jesus, and Sean. 
The saying ensnared the blind one. When a Jew hears that Jesus is God, they're like, no way, you're crazy. When they hear that Jesus is their Savior, Yeshua, no way, and it becomes a snare to them, they'll say no immediately upon hearing that. And that's, they're the blind one. Remember, God has given them blindness in part. The saying ensnared the blind one, behold, we escape the trial. Nobody is going to be left here during the tribulation. And all these people who say, for 2,000 years, Christians have suffered, so therefore we have to as well. God has told us over and over that we are not assigned to his wrath. We are not appointed to his wrath. And right here in the Bible code, it says, we shall escape the trial. What's the, what trial? The one found in Revelation chapter 3. When you're reading the church of Philadelphia, God says, I'm going to allow you to escape the hour of trial, the hour of testing. You will not have to go through any of it. Praise God. And now we have it here in the coded text. We shall escape the trial, the threshing of wheat. Ooh, that's going to be a rough time, man. There's going to be a beat down. God's going to get the tribulum out during the tribulation. He's going to rough up the wheat. Thank God we're going to be in heaven. Thank God we're going to be in our glorified bodies, all of us who are believers. Praise the Lord. Numbers 12, 8. With him I will speak mouth to mouth. Now, this was Moses. Remember, in this passage, when you go to read it, you'll see Aaron and Miriam, the brother and sister of Moses. They were prophets. They were the, the high priest. They were appointed by God. But Moses was given the leadership role, and they kind of wanted that too, you know, like Korah did. And they said, we can lead, we can be all this stuff. And God was livid because God appoints people, and you need to stay in your lane, pal. However God chose you, you stay there, and you rejoice in God for loving you the way he has. And quit trying to get somebody else's job and be envious. I want what they got. And so that's the setup for this story. And then God says, okay, all three of you get to the temple now. You get to the tabernacle now. Get there now. And so the three of them went. And then God shows up in that pillar of cloud. And he speaks out of that cloud. And he says, Aaron and Miriam, you are wicked. You've done wrong here, man. I had chose Moses. And then here's what he says. Numbers 12, 8. With Moses, I will speak mouth to mouth with that guy, even apparently, and not in dark speeches. I'm not going to give him parables. I'm going to tell him my heart, and I'm going to tell him what I want from my dialect is. And not in dark speeches, and in the similitude of the Lord shall he behold. Wherefore, then, are you not afraid to speak against my guy? I speak to him face to face. I have never spoken to you face to face. I'm speaking to you right now in a cloud. He's my guy and leave him alone, man. Wow. God don't play. Stay in your lane. Do your business and endure hardness as a good soldier. Look unto Jesus. Let's walk together. Not everybody is going to be the nose of the body or the tongue of the body or the ears of the body or the eyes of the body. You are what you are and be that to God's glory and quit being envious of somebody else's call. When you get to heaven, you're going to find out that, you know, you were important wherever you were. Everybody who's in the body of Christ is so vital, and that's why you need to stay in your place. Because the body of Christ is whole. He's a whole organism, and we all are small parts of the major whole. And it's important for you to be in your lane and praising God for that, man. Okay? Uh, look, look at Deuteronomy 31.10. At the end of every seven years, this is what we looked at last night. Every year they the children of israel would come to the feast of tabernacles for seven days and then they would have that solemn eighth day but every seven years they would read the books of genesis exodus leviticus numbers and deuteronomy and every year only the men had to show up that was the requirement but every seventh year the wives and the children showed up as well to hear the word of the lord and that's what this is referring to. Deuteronomy 31.10. At the end of every seven years in the solemnity of the year of release in the Feast of Tabernacles. So, so that passage is running right through this Bible code. Okay, that's why it's here. Okay. Psalm 79, verse 5 and 6. Oh, how long, Lord? How long will you be angry forever? Shall your jealousy burn like fire? God's livid right now. Pour out your wrath upon the nations that have not known thee. 
and upon the kingdoms that have not called upon your name. God says, I'm about to. That's, that's America. That's the United States. I'll start with them. I'll start with the worst first. I'll start with the largest one first. I'll take out the head. And then I'm coming for the rest of y'all, man. Amen? That have not known thee upon the kingdoms and have, that have not called upon my name. So let's look at that uh, translation again. This is a great code, man. They were cursed. They were cursed. Here is Sean Mitchell. Praise God. Aren't you guys thankful for Sean Mitchell and his faithfulness? Guys, if you only knew what he has gone through and what he is in the middle of right now, that would humble you to tears before the Lord God that this man kept going and do it, doing what he did. They were cursed. Here's Sean Mitchell. Praise God, praise God, praise God. Hey, you know, we've always heard about the two guys, the two witnesses coming back, the two olive trees, right? The two lampstands. Sean's one of them. You are privileged to have met this guy via the Bible code. Big deal. This is a big, big deal. I hope you understand how big of a deal it is and how blessed you are to be part of this. Blessed are your eyes, for they have seen. Blessed are your ears, for they have heard. Amen. Translation. They were cursed. Here is Sean Mitchell. You will taste the fire of a blameless one. Who's the blameless one? Jehovah? Sure. Jesus? Sure. Sean, made blameless. You, made blameless. But we're hearing from Sean. He's the writer. He's the Moses. He's the one giving us what we're reading and, and hearing, uh, presenting this curse to us. It's because of this Bible code we know that New York City's cursed. The world's cursed. The saying ensnared the blind ones, the Israelites, they don't like the fact that Jesus is God, that he's the blameless one. He was without blame and they charged him guilty and killed him. They don't like that idea and it's going to be a snare and 1.5 million of them will die immediately and many will die throughout. Only one third of the Jews will get to live and believe. Okay, the Bible tells us that, book of Zechariah. So it's going to be an, an ensnaring for the blind ones, but behold, we escape the trial, we believers. Hallelujah, we escape every second of it. Not one wrath will we endure because we're not appointed under wrath. The threshing of the wheat, that's the tribulation by the tribulum. All right, let's look at the next one. This code links the two harvest feasts, the Feast of Weeks, which is Pentecost. Pentecost is the counting of weeks, and we've learned along the way what that means, man. It's been a beautiful journey. It's been a struggle at times. It's been a letdown in our human spirits. Oh man, I thought it would be today. Oh, look at these. And then the joy came in the knowledge that God taught us. We didn't quit. We kept digging and learn. And wow, God brought us new insights that bring us joy. His word does that. In the presence of God is the fullness of joy. And he would turn our sorrow, our mourning into dancing and joy. Okay. So this code connects both feasts. We've always known Pentecost, spring, summer, harvest. And we did not know that the Feast of Tabernacles was involved in that, in the same counting. God's so awesome, man. Praise God. He taught us some wonderful stuff. Not too many people know what you know. Share it with them. Share these Bible codes tonight. Might be the last thing you ever share. Okay? Because John always shares the gospel at the end of these things. You'll be sharing them the gospel. All right. And make sure you download that book. Download the book and get it uh, on zip drives, or whatever. We got some folks, uh, our flash drives, we got some folks that have printed out the entire book, printed it out in book form and got it ready. Okay, you do whatever the Lord leads you to do, but we don't have much time to do it. The quickest, most efficient thing to do is download it. Sh uh, Vondo has put the link up here. You download it and we encourage you to get it on uh, flash drive. So both, both of these feasts are connected to the Feast of Tabernacles and Weeks with the rapture and the destruction that will occur along with it simultaneously. When the bombs come down, we go up. There are most definitely images to see in this code an underwater atomic bomb fired by the Russian Poseidon torpedo will create massive tsunamis that will obliterate, 
New York City and the surrounding areas when Jesus snatches his bride, glory, when he raptures us into the clouds. It will trigger this chain of events. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Maranatha. Amen? Y'all ready to go with us? Let's go. Let's look at the translation here. It says, he, it. Now, I'm going to go with he is Obama because he is the mastermind of this whole thing. And his weapon of choice is this Poseidon. He, it, struck with a heap of ruins the day that Jesus descended. So he is God. He is God, Jesus Christ. And he is using the enemy to use a weapon. Okay? And so he struck the very same day he descended. And he shall descend from heaven with a shout. And the voice of the archangel and the trump of God and the dead in Christ will rise. That's the rapture day. So the day he descends from heaven to the clouds is the exact moment this thing happens. Rapture moment. And we might be right there tonight, guys. This is the eighth day of tabernacles. And we just see a connecting here. Jesus Christ is connecting the dots of the Feast of Weeks and tabernacles together. And he's calling it a rapture and a detonation of the Russian Poseidon. At the same time, simultaneously. So he is God setting it all up, using his puppet, Barack Obama, the mastermind of it all. They, their ch drug of choice is this Poseidon nuke. And it all happens at the rapture. God's timing is incredible. His plans are incredible. The end from the beginning, God's already got you and I sitting in heaven rejoicing at the marriage supper of the Lamb. The end from the beginning. He's just waiting for us to show up. What he's doing. See, guys, God lives. He doesn't have a past, present, or future. He lives in what we term as the eternal present. So, God, I want you to get this through your little mind. Right now, God is waiting. Jesus Christ is waiting to come rapture us, to step out of heaven onto the clouds. But at the same time, he's at creation. Because he's not limited to time or space. So God is at every moment in time. He's in our past. The day he saved you, he's there right now. He's walked with you these 20 years, these 30 years. He's there right now. He's at every step. God is everywhere at all times. He's amazing. He's our friend. And he's protecting us. And he knows the end from the beginning. And he's here to save us out of the hour of trial through his wonderful rapture and deliver us from the very first iota of his wrath. Because we're not appointed to his wrath. He loves us. We're his bride. He's got something very incredibly awesome planned for us. Something very special for us. Translation. He struck with a heap of ruins the day that he descended. A sign is with Sean Mitchell, the voice of the Lord, Jesus, Moses. Sean Mitchell's Moses, guys. And we just see that in the words previous. Sean Mitchell, the voice of the Lord, Yeshua, Moses, in the Feast of Weeks and in the Feast of Tabernacles, both of them together, the Feast of Weeks and the Feast of Tabernacles are the same time. Tonight is the last night of Tabernacles. Do you see where I'm coming from there? Do you hear me knocking? Boom, boom, boom. About to be raptured, guys. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. We're ready to see him. Be ready. Walk in holiness. Walk in with the Spirit. Have all forgiveness in your heart. Just be cool with Jesus. Take the load of sin and the weight that doth easily beset you, your hobbies and all this other stuff, and set, lay it aside and say, God, I don't want nothing to do with any of that. I just want to focus on you, your word, your rapture, your wrath. Everything that you're telling us is what I want to know and hear and share with others. We don't have much time for any of that, but do it while we can. While it is day, the night cometh when no man can work. That's one other proof we believe this is going to happen at night because the target is here, so it's going to be night at the target. It'll be daylight other places, but those resurrections are going to create some kind of earthquake, I believe, some kind of movement. All right. Uh, in the Feast of Weeks and in the Feast of Tabernacles, the signaler, Sean, writes fire. The Bible code is fire, the fire from heaven. He writes fire and we live fire and we love it when we believe the fire is, is wrapped up in our hearts, shut up in our bones like a fire. The commandment of the Lord, the, the, that's what the fire is. The, the Bible code is the commandment of the Lord. The code of Jehovah, yod heh vav -Hey, his signaler, go down with my knowledge. So Sean gets raptured, 
on the day of the detonation, the day when New York City, uh, the trigger is hit on those Poseidons to wipe New York City out and flood it and kill everybody present. The whole city's gone, guys. I'm praying, Lord God, please, please, will you get my family out of there? I got some family who live in New York City, work there. Will you get them out of there? Will you please get them out of there? And guess what I found out? They have stayed out of town. They have a house in Maryland. They have stayed there, and they're not going back till tomorrow. I'm thinking they won't be going back. But I pray, Lord, get them out because I want them saved. Amen? I want them knowing the truth about God and His destruction and His wrath to come and not believe that NAR stuff, that kingdom now dominionism, what they believe. It's all a lie. And I want them to see the truth here. And God answered my prayer, guys. He answers prayer. Pray, pray, pray. So, Sean gets raptured. He goes up, and he is the signaler. He's the sign, and he's going to be giving signals all through the three and a half years, the first three and a half years of the tribulation. He's going to be pointing. He's going to be pointing to terror, pointing to God's judgments. He's the signaler of what God's up to next, and everybody needs to be looking at him and listening to his voice, what he's signaling. Okay, He's doing that now on this side of the rapture. He'll do it on that side of the rapture. Then he gets caught up. He talks to God face-to-face -face like Moses did. Okay, face to face, eye to eye. And then he's going to be coming back and he's going to come down with God's game plan, God's knowledge, God's truth. And he's going to come back with absolute what God wants him to do. Detail, detail, detail after he was debriefed by the Lord face to face. Okay, Sean, when you go back down, you're going to be doing this, this, and this. This will happen and this will happen. He's going to debrief him however God game plans it, but he's going to come down with God's exact game plan, the knowledge of God's heart, what he needs to do for the next three and a half years. Is that sweet or what? And then we see the Deuteronomy passage, 16, 9 to 10. Seven weeks you shall number unto you. Now, when is that? After the resurrection. That is the feast of first fruits. Death, burial, resurrection. The 17th day of the first month. So 17 days after May 15th is when this day was. And so we begin to count the Sunday. If that lands on a Sunday... We begin to count that Sunday for 50 days, and it will land on a Sunday to the Feast of Weeks, to Pentecost. Okay, so that's what this passage is talking about. Deuteronomy 16, 9 and 10. Seven weeks shalt thou number unto thee, begin to number the seven weeks from such a time as thou beginnest to put the sickle whew, harvest, the first fruits. They take that first batch that they cut off, they tie it with a red ribbon, and they head on down to the temple with it. And hand it over to the priest. And the priest takes it and he waves it before the Lord. And then the priests get to eat that wheat or that barley for themselves. That's how the priest got to eat was through tithes and offerings. The people would bring the first fruits of their increase down to the temple. And that's how the priest got to eat. Because God wants to take care of the priest. He said, that's why he told us, do not muzzle the ox. If you've got a hardworking preacher, make sure that he's fed. Take care of him. And that's what he's referring to there. And so th they would take that down to him. He says, as soon as you put the sickle, boom, to uh, on first fruits, that's the 17th day of the first month, start counting your 50 days on that Sunday after, okay? Uh, and thou shalt keep the feast of weeks unto the Lord your God with a tribute of a free will offering. And that's what these past 2,000 years have been. God doesn't require a tithe of us. You bring your tithe to the church. People who preach that are money hungry. Okay, they want your tithe because they got to pay for their building fund. What God's called us to do is give out of a free will. And the closer you get to him, you realize that means everything you got. Lord, I give you everything. I give you everything, Lord. Man, praise God. Praise the Lord, Jesus. I, free will offering. I give you my heart, my mind, my soul. I give you my car. I give you my house. Lord, it's all yours. That's what he wants. That's what Pentecost has all been all about for the last 2,000 years. And these fools who are preaching money and grubbing hungry, and I want more, and you ladies, there's a widow right now. You, you've got, you got your last $1,000, and the Lord is speaking to you right now, and you need to write that check to me, and God will take that seed, and he'll build it. Liar, liar, see you in hell, bro. That is not the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is not Pentecost. That is not the Feast of Weeks. That is not the time we're living in, the church age. The church age is giving out of a benevolent, willful heart. There's your passage right there back in Deuteronomy. Uh, yeah, the Old Testament. Deuteronomy is Jesus' favorite book. That's what he quoted from more than anything. You might want to read Deuteronomy real quick. 
Familiarize yourself with the heart of God. Deuteronomy is awesome, guys. Deuteronomy is it's awesome. And uh, yeah, give, give with a free will offering. And then the verse going through there is 2 Chronicles 8.13. In the Feast of Weeks and in the Feast of Tabernacles. What? That, that portion, th- that verbiage is right here in this code putting them together. 2 Chronicles 8. Ooh, 8, the 8th day. Hmm. Very interesting. 2 Chronicles is the 16th book of the Bible. That's sacrifice. Because of Jesus' sacrifice on the eighth day, 13 becomes a four to us. 13 is rebellion on earth. At the same time, uh, one plus three is the door to heaven, to Jesus, to the judgment seat of Christ. 13 is who reigns on this earth. It'll be a rebellious government for the next seven and a half years. And so they're simultaneous. Four for us. The rapture door, and before me, chapter 4, verse 1 in Revelation, was an open door, and I went through, that was the rapture door, but on earth it's 13. And so God's numbers speak right here, and then the verse was, the, the line going through the Bible code says, the Feast of Weeks and the Feast of Tabernacles. Ring-a-ling-a-ding-ding, folks, with that number 8 sitting right there in front of us. God's sacrifice made it all happen. And we praise him. That's what Feast of Tabernacles is. Lord, all the blessings of my life. It's because of you, 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 and only you. Amen. Uh, Lindy, she gave me a note earlier that on like the last three or so Bible codes, the uh, matrix numbers, you know, the, the skips, the equidistant letter skips, equal 25, 26, and 27. I got to open that up because I forgot what she said they mean, man. Because this is very important to us. Uh, Can you put that up, Lindy, for us? What you wrote me, if you don't mind. Because that's incredible. She says, the two codes Sean posted today both have the ELS numbers adding to 25, 26, 27. 25 is the payment for sin. That's what 25 means in the Bible. Payment for sin. 26 is the gospel. 27 is holy truth. Payment for sin, the gospel, and that's the holy truth. There's actually been three codes, she says, with the same three ELS numbers adding up. We talked about that yesterday, and this just happens to be two more again. They add up to 25, 26, 27. Man, aren't you thankful for God? Aren't you thankful for His grace? Aren't you thankful for these Bible codes, man? Praise the Lord. Let's see, man. I'm more... I don't want to miss Sean. If he's put up another one, boy, we sure, I don't want to miss that tonight. Okay. Share, share the link a little while ago. He shared a new one. We got a new one to look at real quick. Let's do this, homeboy. This is the one from 40 minutes ago. Praise God. Let's see what he says here. There is no date in this code, but the Feast of Tabernacles began on November 22nd, 2022, and we are currently on the eighth day, which is the solemn assembly of its own, but still connected to Sukkot, which is the Feast of Tabernacles. I love this. Don't you guys love the Bible codes? It's still connected. Day eight is connected to Sukkot or the Feast of Tabernacles. The appearance of the feast in this code doesn't necessarily mean all of this happens during the feast period, but it is most certainly close to it. Whenever the rapture happens, this event of destruction will occur at the same time. So that's what we do know. The Poseidon bomb going off will happen simultaneously with the rapture. Amen. Amen. God will use America's enemies to destroy her, and then he will destroy them. New York City is a type of Babylon the Great, and Revelation 17 and chapter 18 is a shadow of what will happen to the real mystery Babylon the Great, the future Jerusalem. So God's coming after Jerusalem. Jerusalem killed all his prophets. Jerusalem killed his only begotten son. He has a score to settle with mystery Babylon. She's the heart. That's the true mystery Babylon. People can talk, oh, it's Rome. Oh, it's Mecca. Oh, it's in New York City. God's going to blow New York City off the map and say, no, it ain't. I'm coming for you, Jerusalem. Okay? But she is a shadow, a type of What's coming? She's we we refer to here in this Bible study as New York is the head of this monster, the head of the mystery, and the heart is Jerusalem. Okay. Whenever the rapture rapture happens, this 
event of destruction will occur at the same time. God will use America's enemies to destroy her, and then he will destroy them. New York City is a type of Babylon the Great, and Revelation 17 and 18 is a shadow of what will happen in the real mystery Babylon the Great, the future Jerusalem under the Antichrist. The world will be wailing and moaning, saying, What city is like unto this great city? Jesus will extinguish its lamp forever. Wow. When God comes after you, you're done. Amen? Unless he's coming after you for the rapture, then life has just begun. Amen? Praise God. He's about to come. He's about to step down on the clouds. Revelation 18, 21 to 23 says, And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall this great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. And the voice of harpers and musicians and of the pipers and trumpeters shall be heard no more at all in thee. And no craftsman of whatsoever craft he be shall be found any more in thee. And the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee. Uh, New York's done. New York is done. Not a sound. God will finally have his peace in that wicked, wicked place. And then he'll do the same in Jerusalem in seven years from now. Shut everybody's mouth. Shut them all down. Uh, and the voice of the bridegroom and the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For my merchants were great men of the earth. For by thy sorceries were all the nations deceived. You know, Broadway, music, television script, movies, everything goes on with New York City. They are wicked and because of them, the entire world has soaked it in, including the church, watching your porn in your bedroom. You boys staying up late after all the family's gone to bed watching your porn. New York City brought all this about, and God's going to kill it, and he's coming after the rest of you. Next, he's going to get everybody, every wicked person on this planet who will not come to him in humility and believe, he's going to destroy you. And in the tribulation, you're going to have to believe and call out to him. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord at that time shall be saved. That Romans 10 passage is talking about then. He's talking about Israel. 9, 10, and 11. He's talking about Israel, Israel, Israel. And if they're going to believe on the name of the Lord, whosoever shall believe on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And how shall they believe on him? You know, they got to call on him. They're, they're going to cry out. They're going to make a step in this one. They're going to believe, but they're going to call out. Okay, let's look at the translation, Poseidon. This is interesting. This is the first time I've laid eyes on this thing. Poseidon to attack with a missile of the night. Well, there we have it. Going to be attack at night in New York City. Get all your clocks all set up, guys. No one is going to happen in your area. Okay, USA, they will fall. Murderer. He cursed the military conqueror. Their intellect is ashamed. He destroyed a lamp. Yes, Yeshua. An enemy is my humility. That's the USA. Yeshua says, the enemy is my humility. He's going to humble them, humble them, humble them below hell. To the fact that, you know, New York's lamp will be put out. Broadway and all the Broadway lights, you won't be able to find those anywhere. You'll have to put on some scuba deer and some serious pressurization so you're eardrums don't bust if you're going to go down and look at lights and they won't be shining if they exist. He's putting their lamps out. Proverbs 26, 18, as a madman who casteth firebrands, arrows, and death. That's Putin. He, they refer to him as the madman, the Russian, the Poseidon. He'll be casting this weapon and destroying the United States with it. Joel 2.16. Hmm, 216. That's Obama's number. Six times six times six is 216. Check this out. The wall, remember I was talking about the 12 layers of gems that make up the wall of heaven? That's 144 cubits. That's 216 feet. That's where Satan stole the number because it's glorious. It's awesome. It's heavenly. And Satan says, I want that number for me. 216. Yeah, we'll make that six times six times six and we'll use it for the devil and Barack Obama. Barack Obama's number is 216. You guys know that his birthday is August 4th, and that is the 216th day of the year. 
Let's see what Joel 2.16 has to say. Let the bridegroom go forth from his chambers and the bride out of her pavilion. Jesus and his people, Jesus and his bride, let it happen. It's going to happen on the same day. As soon as crazy man launches his arrows and God says, they're my arrows, they're my weapons, they're my uh, weapons of indignation, but I'm letting this madman push the button, right? All right, let's look at that translation again. We'll call it a night. I had three codes, man. Praise the Lord, Sean. God bless you, dude. We're praying for you. Guys, pray for him. Pray for him. You'll be glad you did when you see him. When you're up there watching Jesus brief him, and you know that you were, you know, like one of 500 who paid attention, if that many, it's going to be an awesome day, guys, to be part of that. That God showed us these truths on this side, and we, by faith, believed it. You can't please him without faith. He, he is tickled by people with faith who believe it. I'm going to encourage you to quit being a wuss and quit being kind of, you know, back in the background on this thing. I'm wondering if it's true. You better believe it. You better believe it is true. You better believe it's the word of God. You better believe it's God's word in his dialect, man, on perfect mathematical skips. Believe that and you'll be blessed when we see Jesus in the face. All right. Translation. Poseidon to attack with a missile of the night. Whew, that's pretty heavy. USA, they will fall. Murderer. Now, USA is a murderer, and so is the one who's going to kill the USA. They're all murderers, man. Why? Because Satan is the god of this world, and they have to break all ten commandments if they're going to please Satan. So you have to murder. That's what abortion's all about. And predator drones. That's what Obama said. I, I'm, I'm a massive with, I can kill some folks with predator drones. Because he's such a wuss, he has to do it from a distance. His hand-to-hand -hand is garbage. But his manipulative button pushing, he, he can do that. He's a murderer, and the murderer will be killed by a murderer, and then Jesus Christ, the righteous, the vindictive righteous one, boom, is going to break them all down and kill every last one of them. He's going to kill the murderers, all of them. Poseidon, to attack with a missile of the night, USA, they will fall. Murderer, he cursed the military conqueror. Their intellect is ashamed. They're stupid. They're retards. American thinking they're so smart. The Bible tells us in Romans they've actually become fools. Chapter 1, Romans 1. Thinking they're so smart and intellectual and brilliant. I'm a military guy. I'm a four-star. God says, thump. Their intellect is ashamed. He destroyed a lamp. A fake lamp. Jesus is the true lamp. The Bible codes the real light, the real lamp. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. These guys, everybody else on the world and most Christians are led by Babylon script. A false lamp, a false light. The lights of Broadway in Vegas. Now Dubai and Abu Dhabi. We're going to be gone and they're still going to be going. And God's going to head over there next to put their lamp out. Because God's all about putting out fake lamps. He destroyed a lamp. Yes, Jesus, Yeshua. An enemy is my humility, the USA. I love you guys, man. We'll call it a night. God bless. This might be it. We'll be preaching and singing in heaven next, maybe. Wouldn't it be great? Wouldn't it be great if it all happened tonight on the eighth day, the great day, the last day? It's called the last day. The last great day, the great last day. Wouldn't it be awesome? I'm looking forward to it, guys. I love you. God's blessings all over you. Quit being wimpy Christians and fire this stuff out. Load your pages up with this stuff so people can get the gospel long after you're gone. He being dead, yet speaketh. Be that guy. I love you bunches, man. God bless.